Hello everyone, welcome to our Tuesday q and I'm Eric Griffin, President of ITM Trading. With me I have Lynette Zhang, our Chief Market Analyst. For those of you who don't know or tuning in for the first time, we take your questions submitted to us via email at questions at itmtrading.com. I ask them to her live. She's not seen any of these questions, so you're getting a real live organic response. All right, Zoltan V okay. asks, what would happen if the longer term yields were to collapse? Well, that would actually be pretty scary. If and what that would what that would really tell you is that, although I hate using this term, but it's flight to safety. So that would be about fear. And that's so. What would happen would be we'd probably be entering the next major crisis. Okay, Bobby B, can okay. you please clarify the mechanism by which quantitative easing okay. results? in hyperinflation. <laughs> How does the money get into the hands of the people? That is a great question and one that the <coughs> central bankers have been asking themselves as well because the transition mechanism to the general public is through bank lending. But there has to be the demand for the bank lending too and, and with debt levels this high it's a bit of a problem. So all of that hyperinflation from that QE which is just printing money for free and giving it to the banks, well, it stayed inside of the banking system and drove up stocks and bonds and real estate. So the way that that would happen would be if the banks, if you, if the public started demand, right? Demanding more loans and then the banks were more generous with loaning those funds out. That's how it's gonna happen. Could also occur if we had a situation where the dollar lost world reserve currency status, right? And then oh, all, not... all those dollars would, all that QE dollars that we did print would also come home to oh. roost for a hyperinflation in the United States as well. There are, yes, I, I'm not, um, the question was how does it get into the public's hands? Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, the QE is coming home to roost. At some point, it, right now it's, <clears> just, <throat> it's just inside of the stocks, the bonds, and the real estate a run on those products would see everything frozen. Everything frozen for long enough, because they certainly did that in 2008 as well, would uh, eliminate whatever, most likely, I should say, eliminate the confidence that the population has in the currency and in the system. And really, it's that loss of confidence the public's loss of confidence in the central bank's power and their ability to keep things together, and then ultimately their loss of confidence in the currency as they watch the system collapse. But if it was a direct, how does it get to the public, all of that, that money? Through the banking it's system. through the banking system. Okay, so Philip K. asks, when the real estate market begins to collapse, Yes. do you think government... Do you think government and state pensions will begin to show insolvency? Yes, I do. Because so much, and it's not just in real estate, but it's in all of those different asset class, what's inside of the pensions and the retirement plans. It's all of these paper products. So, yes, I do think that once that becomes obvious, you know, it really goes back to the confidence again. But once it becomes obvious, and, and if... In if entities, I'm not necessarily talking about individuals in here, but if major entities got a margin call, in other words, they had to come up with money to bail out another part of what they were doing, loans that they were doing or what have you, you know, uh, we could see some significant deterioration in confidence because of that. Because when you've got to come up with money, you sell what people will buy not necessarily what you want to sell. So what's going to be liquid when there's a run on all of those paper assets? Okay, so Leo G asks, if we go <clears throat> if we go to negative interest rates, mm -hmm. how does this affect the rates on loans and credit cards? Well, that you know, they've been experimenting with that quite a bit in Europe. So there are actually some negative mortgages, 
But what? generally, really? you, I think that there are. I'll have to look into that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that in the be. Netherlands, I know. But, but generally speaking, that's the only time that I heard of um, any John Q. Publix rates being negative, which I don't really know what happened with it. So, Megan, would you mark down and let me look at that and just verify that? But your, the Publix rates don't go negative. Publix, Publix rates are still positive, typically, because you're going to pay the interest on it. Right. That benefits the banks. The banks right, because they right. make a bigger spread. And the corporations, which is actually <clears throat> something I'm going to talk about next week. Tomorrow I'm going to talk, uh, Thursday rather, I'm going to do part two of real estate. But we're seeing uh, a lot of corporate debt in the negative rate territory now, in Europe, not here. But we're all... We're all in the same boat, so I'm not sure that that really, really matters. But yeah, it's pretty interesting. But the individual rates, yeah, you, those aren't going to go negative. Right, but they'll they'll hold them somewhere above positive, but they might continue to go down, right? Absolutely. I mean, look, right now, what have we got? Mortgage rates at like back four and a half percent or something, or something like that. So yeah, they'll go down, but it's not like I mean, who knows? To keep this going, let's see. Would you pay somebody to borrow money from you? Well, they are in Europe. So I don't know. Maybe we would see negative rates. Uh, but but you got to understand that it makes no sense. And it's certainly not a sustainable program. Who's paying for all those negative government bond rates? Taxpayers are paying for that. So you have to keep that in mind as well. Oh, so Wayne asks, <clears throat> which comes first, a stock market crash or a dollar crash? Or could, would it be both at the same time? I would think most likely it would be a stock market crash first. Okay. Because as long as the stock market stays up there from, our, from the perception management, for the way that we think about the stock market. The way that we think about the economy, right? It, it, voila. It's all tied to the stock market. Dow's exactly. up, great, everything's great. Exactly. So I would say definitely, you know, I mean, I don't have a crystal ball, but my bet would yes, be. Yes, you do, it's right there. Oh, well, that's true. <laughs> literally thinking the same thing and you said it out loud. I'm sorry, yes, I do. They just don't <laughs> tell me very much. <laughs> They're just broken currently. Right. Okay, so uh, let's see. Nikki Nikki Blue asks, what's the difference between quantitative easing and hyperbaric injections in terms of currency dumping? I don't know. What's mm -hmm. hyperbaric? Do you know what hyperbaric I, injections are? I don't know what hyperbaric Never injections, even heard that term but it, I, I haven't either. So let's write that down. Well, and so let me at, we'll ask that. Nikki Blue if uh, <clears throat> Matt, Nikki Blue. Make a comment. What's hyperbaric injections? Maybe there's a different uh, term for it. Uh, Alona Dallas. Why is gold selling off today yet silver is up bigly? Oh, shoot. No oh. idea. Do you know? Well, uh, yeah, actually, I think it's Perfect. because, but yeah, because President Trump came out and said that the trade deal with China is far from over. And um, also you had, you had our Treasury Secretary talk about regulations around the um, Libra and things like that. So you're seeing not just gold, but you're all, and, and I'm going to say spot gold, uh, but you're also seeing the markets sell off, et cetera. So gold's down 10, silver's up 17 cents. Okay. So remember too, on the, um, on spot gold, the bottom is at 1350. So we could see it go inside of that range but we're still far away from that. So you could have some profit taking, but I think that it's more about that the trade deal isn't as far along as they were hoping that it was. Well, so and did you- some additional <clears throat> um, regulations, because yes. Okay, I was looking at the spot prices to, to see what she was talking about, but did you, did you talk about, because she says, why is gold selling off, but silver's up? Well, the silver being up, um, I don't know, because silver is, even though it's a currency metal, it's more of an industrial metal. So I, I so there actually could be can't from that answer. Sector. There could be buying from that sector, but I can't answer that other part. I just basically knew why gold was selling off. Gotcha. Sorry. Um, well, and 
it just brings up a good point. We don't track the spot price every day because for to a certain extent we don't really care what the price is per day. Other right. than it might affect perception and, and buying, um, but <clears throat> it's not something that we're tracking heavily. Right. Um, but I can tell you as a technician, because obviously I do put both of those charts in, in you know, my work very regularly, that uh, gold recently broke out from that cup formation, mm -hmm. whereas <clears throat> silver is still building its base. It's in a cup formation, but it hasn't broken out yet, and it hasn't gone to the upside. So, I, you know, I'll so keep, I gold, keep my so eye on that. So gold and silver aren't necessarily going to track together. They, and they didn't during the upswing, right? This is exactly what you're pointing to. That's, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Huh? Maybe blue um, did. I mean, right Hyperbolic injection. Yeah. Well, do me a favor. Look it, look it up on Google and then post that up there. Okay. See what okay. hyperbolic injection means. Right, because the, I would think that that's pretty much QE where they just massively print, or MMT, modern money theory, where they just go on a shopping spree with an unlimited checkbook. So Mel, Mel Vitoni asks, <clears throat> I just read a report, report that Deutsche Bank's clients are pulling out a billion dollars per day out of their bank. What's your feelings about that? Why in the world did they have them in there this long? With Deutsche Bank being so dangerous? <laughs> oh, my God. <coughs> yeah, and now they're trying to transition. So, you know, that kind of sounds like there's a run on the bank. That's what that sounds like. And um, Yeah, we haven't verified that ourselves, though, right? So right, I don't know. correct. But if, if that is indeed the case, um, number one, it'd be interesting to see if they stop that bleeding. They have to stop that bleeding, though. Because Deutsche Bank is the most is is singularly the most dangerous bank on the planet because of its derivative book and its losses and its its insolvency. So um, yeah, I would say that that sounds like a run on the bank. I don't know why they had it in there that long. And if that is the mm. case, then at some point it's going to crack. Okay, what have we got here? Something go back, about space want. technology. If you go back, you'll be Hyperbolic ingestion. injection. Let's see. QE versus mixer tethers. I don't know. I think maybe I think uh, Nikki Blue might be trying to throw us off. I think it's working. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's I think he's messing but with us. But you know, her hyperbolic is really rapid, right? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Rapid, whatever. So uh, I don't think <clears throat> that there would be a whole Many lot of difference uh, between those. To, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, quantitative easing was a tsunami of, I mean, we can look on the charts, you know, straight up. So that would be hyperbolic. The difference is, is where it lands. When it lands in the banking system, then the banks divvy it out to wherever they want to go. But, um, so, I don't know. I'm sorry, Nikki Blue. Brian Stevens. I don't know if you'll be able to answer this question because it's not like you're studying spot prices in other markets. We are seeing negative interest rates in other emerging countries. Oh. How are their spot prices holding up for gold and silver? Well, actually, um, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, there uh, gold and silver, I don't know about silver, but gold is uh, up in a lot of the countries with negative interest rates. But you know, that's actually easy enough. If you wanna see where that is, you can go on. Um, Yahoo publishes gold and silver and you can go in and click on it and pick a bunch of different currencies. Mm. And so look you, at the charts. And look at the charts. So Yahoo Finance, you, where would you search it? So make it easy, do you know? Oh, it's, I'm to sorry, it's not Yahoo Finance, it's Kitco. Kitco, Kitco. that does that. Okay. So if you go on um, <clears throat> Kitco, I don't know, I have it automatically it on my computer. Quotes? Probably, probably it is. And you can pick and choose the currency that you can see, and then you can see it and for yourself. And look at yourself. the charts. Yes, because I think I just did one in the Euro, um, like yesterday or the day before, just just like recently, and it's up. The spot markets are up. Okay. What uh, what reminders do you have for us? 
I know we just recorded Rickards yesterday, right? Jim Rickards, yes. we recorded. Yes, oh my gosh, I'm so excited about that one. So um, I think that's going to be uh, published Within tomorrow. The next, next couple of days at least. Next couple, yes, for sure. <clears throat> and then uh, this afternoon, I have Martin North. So, um, and he's in Australia. Can we move Wayne Jett to next week? Wayne he Jett is, is next week. Okay. Yes, he is next week. Uh, and then uh, on Thursday, I'm going to do part two of the real estate series. And I'm going to talk more about commercial real estate versus individual housing. So, because we have to see all aspects. I'm still not sure whether or not this is going to be a two or a three parter. It, it kind of depends, but it's definitely at least two parts. And that's what I'm going to talk about on, on, uh, on Thursday. And then next week, I have uh, Wayne Jett. So we've got a pretty good roster coming up. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. He actually uh, said that he thinks, and we'll talk more about this. I plan on, on digging into that a little bit more. But I know that on Greg upcoming Hunter. Upcoming events. What? Your, your calendar. I was looking at upcoming events. I've seen that you got, well, Mario, Mario Aneku is on the 30th. He's not on there. He, well. Oh, well, because we, I don't do the whole I know. month. I was just looking for my own. I was looking for my oh, own benefit, and Megan was laughing at me. <laughs> well, I'm on it. I'm on it. She's on it. She's on it. But uh, he had said on the uh, Greg Hunter show that he thought that we could see the reset as before the end of this year. So we'll talk more about that. With Wayne Jett? Interview. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes, I, I watched the interview. It was a great cool. interview. All right. Well, we should so, be excited about that one then. Absolutely. Interesting to hear what he has to say. So, and yes, we do have Mario Aneco, and we've got Gerald Salente coming up, and, you know, some really, really good people. So, and I think that you are all going to thoroughly enjoy the interview that <laughs> I did with Jim Everett. So, for you to stop snooping. Stop snooping. <laughs> <laughs> don't be looking at her calendar. <laughs> well, see, I don't know. I still like my paper calendar right in it's front of my face. It's certainly easy to see what you got coming up. Exactly. Thank you for, I even make her print out my my digital calendar so that I can, when I'm sitting there working, Sneak I can glance at it. Well, right? that's the whole month at a, at a view, right? Exactly. Rather than just like, oh, I got to click in, look around. I like it. I know. It looks good. So All right. convenient. Okay. Bye, right, family. <laughs> at any rate. Family. Do your spiel. Do your spiel. Megan is annoyed. Well, so shields are made of isn't something. She the, isn't she I can't the director? remember. Are they made of paper? Are shields made of paper? No. Do you need this? No. We don't need no stinking paper. <laughs> they are made of metal, real physical metal in your possession, gold and silver. Perfect. So, so until tomorrow. We'll see you. Be ta please take care out there. Be safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.